All right, we're back. Hopefully the uh, feedback will be better. I'll try to talk more quietly. You almost have to whisper when you're talking into a laptop microphone. Well, we had stopped. It was on the 49 here in Matthew 24:2, where it but the text, because that's what we're going to compare now, is to show the aptness of the text with the meter. Hoda apocrites epen autois. In my badly pronounced Greek. And he answered them and said, actually you should say, then he answered them and said, That's where it ends at 2049, and you think, well, how can that be meaningful? Wait, just wait. But keep in mind what this text is saying. Then he answered them and said, got it? That's the text in Matthew 24 2, first clause. You always have to parse to get these date lines to work and to get the meter to be clear. You have to parse by clause, grammatical clause. All right? So this is 49. And if we parsed it rightly, and if it's really referring to Daniel, then the text in Daniel that's also 49 will have a peculiar relevance to the text that ends at syllable 49 here. Okay? So what does the text here in Daniel say? Now go get your Bible and translation if that makes you feel better. It's Daniel 9, 4. You can, you know, stop and do a new tab in your browser and just Google on Daniel 9, 4 Bible and you'll find the verse. So you don't even have to go get a Bible if you're too busy. And basically what Daniel 9 is saying is that this is my pra Dan Daniel's praying to God and he said you know to to my God and he's saying you know you're the great God who's, and and you will love everybody who keeps your commandments the word commandments is right here it's a very famous word in Judaism even until today mitzvot plural of mitzvah okay they say va now but they didn't used to the, this this letter right here, they call it a vav today, but it really is a W sound most of the time. And so they used to call it in, in theology, in you know, seminaries from 50, 50, even 100 years ago, they called it a wow. W-A-W. -W. So mitzvot, plural. And here it's your commandments. Okay, now, this is talking about, right here, guarding, okay, the word commandment is what? Said, spoken, given, words by God, so right here right away see the same God in nature Jesus Christ oh, I can't stand the way the stupid PDF works he answered them and said God said something commandments Keeping the commandments. God is talking there and God is talking here. See, he's telling them something. Matthew pads the text in between the stuff that Christ says and, you know, his narrative about wh where they were. Like, here's this is all Matthew's writing. And as Christ was coming out of the temple. Okay. That's in Matthew's narrative. Those aren't quite Christ's words. Christ's words start right here. See. 
and answering them he said that's still Matthew talking this whole verse 1 and the first clause in verse 2 is Matthew talking but this text right here that Matthew's writing is that Christ talks Christ talks he's God he's man okay so by tying the 49 to Daniel 9 4 it's another way to state that Jesus Christ is God and it's very pithy and it's very witty and it's almost satirical because by using 49 you're being reminded of the other 49 in Daniel and of course and the 49 in Daniel is the result of not keeping the commandments see this is about keeping the commandments right here this text right here about keeping the commandments that God gave you and because they didn't they ended up having a 49 year you know they missed 49 sabbatical years those were the commandments keep every seventh year they didn't so 430 years elapsed where they did not observe sabbatical years and God finally says okay done you're going out so Christ is now telling them about the future just like they were supposed to observe the future for all their sabbatical years and God warned them of course it was Christ in theophany doing it same God you don't observe my commandments I'm taking your temple down so he's deliberately referring to the Daniel 9 passage and he's also deliberately reminding them that he's God and he's the same God who did the warning here okay he's invoking his authority as God so you see that 49 is pretty important all right and the text is matched because he's answering them and saying and here Daniel is a witness to what God had warned and said because he's setting it up for 9 5 where he's gonna say you know we've sinned like that this first word right here is we've sinned right here Hateno. we've sinned the very first word in Daniel in Daniel 9 5 we have sinned yeah and he's warning them of that okay he answered them and said okay and then the next the next phrase in the Greek here I'm translating for you so you don't have to look it up you see all this pointing at the stones because they're 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 all drooling over how beautiful the temple is that's the word for temple right there Yeru in genitive case Oh, the Yeru. Oh, look at you too, Yeru. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he says, oh, you, you, you see all this? Pointing at the same stones they're drooling over. And then, believe it when I tell you. And then here in the bottom, the last clause of verse 2, there ain't going to be one stone left upon another. And that's an 84. Which is Psalm 90, verse 4. This is Psalm 90, verse 3. This is Psalm 90, verse 4. So he's, he's warning them of a bad thing, but he's pointing them to Psalm 90, verse 4, because that's the prophecy of the millennium. Okay? So yes, it's bad, but the temple was supposed to fall before the millennium begins. That's what Daniel 9, 26 ends up being about. Is that the temple the second temple was gonna fall too so he's reminding them in advance remember Psalm 90 and Daniel 9 is about how Psalm 90 gets done so I'm going to use the same meter for Psalm 90 for the Millennium okay so that when you tie Daniel 9 and the warning to what I'm saying here I'm about to say it it's at 49 just like Daniel's about to say we sinned don't forget that although I'm punishing you now or you're gonna be punished it has a good ending okay 
That's what he's saying with the 84 that he's going to lead up to. But he, but at 49, he hasn't done it yet. 49, he's just getting ready to give them the content. 49 years after Herod started to rebuild the temple. Okay? 49 years after Christ is talking. And by the time you get to 84, it's going to be the end. Now, Daniel is using his first timeline at 49. There's more to Daniel's dateline and when he wrote that I'm telling you. I'm trying to keep it simple because most people's eyes glaze over when they see a lot of numbers. So now I want to go back to an easier number that's going to make a whole lot more sense once you hear about it. Christ is talking in 30 AD. We know that from this 49. 49 years after Herod started rebuilding the temple. That was a way they measured time. That is still the way they measure time. Jews still measure time. They got the wrong dates now. But they still measure time in years from the time the temple fell. Years from the time the first temple was built. All of their numbers are wrong. But the way they, they measure, the methodology of measure is still just like what I'm showing you. Okay, so I mean you've got a verification that you can make in current modern day Judaism. It's the same technique. Years from X. All the Bible's written that way, pretty much. Okay, so now years from X. It's 30 AD when Christ is talking. Now look at this. That's a 30 when he's talking. Here's your syllable counts. That's 16 years later. This is 40 years later. Now look at the text. The disciples came to him one by one and pointed out to him the beauty of the stones of the temple. And 40 years later, that temple is going to be gone because 40 years later is 70 AD. You see the satire, you see the wit. You see the aptness of the syllable counts. You see how you can tell, yes, we really do have the original words of scripture. Because, honey, this is biting. Nobody would have known. Because they still don't know about this today. I'm the first one, as far as I know, that ever discovered it in modern times. And I can't find anybody who directly talks about this any time prior to me. But yet it's been sitting in scripture and look how apt. 40 syllables equals years from now. That temple that they're talking about ain't going to exist. And of course that's exactly what Christ says right here. Right here. Using 84 to remind them of Psalm 90 verse 4. Okay. 40 years, 40 syllables equals 40 years from when Christ talks. Don't you think that they'd be remembering, oh wow, this is 70 AD, it's 40 years later, just like he said. I mean, scholars all know that, that, that the temple was supposed to go down 40 years later. But what they didn't know is that that was a syllable counting one year per syllable. That's as a, a rhetorical style, a calendar a meter calendar in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and here you're seeing it in Matthew 24 1 40 years equals 40 syllables the temple see the wit the temple building of the temple 40 years don't you think anybody who got the 40 years and they're looking at this verse 40 years from the temple, and they're like, oh wow, it occurred right on time. The buildings of the temple are no more. Just like Christ is saying by the time you get down here. Now, by the time you get down here, this is 84 plus 30. So it's really 114 AD. But the meaning of the text from here on out still has as its starting point or its hark back the last time the word temple was used because you see it, it, that's the other point about this you'll notice this is really clever and Greek is clever like this 
The other Greek literature is clever like this too. This is the last time the word temple is used in, in what would be considered to be a, a historically relevant context. All right. When he comes back to it, he's come back full circle to the present. He'll talk about it again as, you know, like when this stuff happens, you know, and you see the abomination of standing in the temple. Because at that point he's mentioning it again because this is where Daniel's going to get his, you know, reply from God in Daniel 9, 24 through 27. And by the way, God replies in the same kind of countdown meter. That's where, you know, when you see in Daniel 9, 26, he uses 77 sevens, and then he uses 62 sevens, and then he uses a single seven. All that reply, those actual textual numbers, are actually playing on the meter that Daniel uses. They're not coming out of thin air like they look like they're doing in the English. All right? The same thing here. By the time you get to 84, 84 is 44 years after 40. There's a reason for that. Okay, but I'm not going to cover it yet. Just notice, look, this is the 40th year. This is a, dang, I have trouble with my mouse. This is the 40th syllable. It's about the temple. 40 years from now, 30 AD, the temple. They'll all notice that. Okay? So the aptness is, is that at syllable 49, he who is God is talking, warning. And at syllable 49 here, Daniel is talking about having the commandments of God. And here is the God-man getting ready to talk and give them a prophetical set of commandments as a result of Something that's going to happen. Because what does he do? He says there's not going to be one stone on the other. And when you see the abomination of desolation, then run. Right? He's given them all kinds of things that they have to do. All kinds of warnings, information and warnings of stuff to do. Year by year. Because every single word in this is signifying something for a year. This is 16 years later. This is 40 years later. This is 49 years later. 57 years later, 63 years later. And 63 years later is when the millennium was supposed to start relative to when he's talking. See, if you know that 1050 period, he is going to die 63 years before that millennium was supposed to start, the end of the 4th 1050. And that's why this is an 84, because it's supposed to be when the millennium starts. That's why he's using the 84 to remind them of Psalm 90 verse 4 which says the, the day of the Lord is as a thousand years. And from that time onward the expression day of the Lord means the millennium. That's their shorthand. That's their nickname for the millennium. So he's the dating of the text here at 63 is also years 2x. Here x is the millennium. Christ is going to die 63 years before the millennium, but he's supposed to die seven years later. And you also know that from Daniel's meter. And you also know that from Daniel 9, 26. But nobody ever counts it right. They use lunar years, so they miss the fact that there's an extra seven years there. If you use solar years, then you run then the then the timeline runs to 37 AD not to 30 AD and 37 AD is exactly the same timeline that Isaiah 53 uses now before I make your eyes glaze over hopefully you just got what I need you to get out of it is oh these things mean something yeah they do each one of these numbers has doctrinal significance relative to the text and I'm trying to give you a taste of it now because you remember we still got to go back to our period of time but I want you to see that you know none of this is arbitrary that this is all based on other passages in Bible and there's an actual way you're supposed to interpret it based on the way these numbers in interact with the text 
but not only the text you're looking at, but also other Bible text. Okay? Like, let's say that your... Let, let's say that your phone number began with 212. That's a New York area code. Every time you see 212, it's going to be familiar to you. You don't even necessarily have to see it as a phone number. You see 212 and immediately you're going to think of a New York area code. Because you're used to seeing it so much. Well, that's the same thing with these numbers here. People learned to see them so much, they came to have their own significance based on the passages where these numbers are used and then and there are a lot of passages like with the 49 here that you know the text when you look at the dates in the text the actual dates in the text then you can count and realize that it's 49 you don't need to see it in the meter but you do so now all of a sudden there's an association set up kind of like a 212 area code right you've seen a number that you that you're familiar with 84 oh everybody's going to know that that's the millennium passage in psalm 90 verse 4 okay everybody's going to know that psalm 90 verse 3 is mentioned and what does psalm 90 verse 3 say god says come home return to who return that's a very pregnant word in judaism it means return to the land return home return to me Return to God. Those are all the significances that it's got. And that's in Psalm 90, verse 3. Return. And that's at 63 syllables. In Genesis 1, 3, it's let there be light. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Oh. And 63 years, 63 sevens after your, after your slavery and after you leave Egypt, you're now going into the light and going into the land, so you're returning to the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you're going into the light, and you are led by light. What kind? Remember, a pillar of fire by night and a bright cloud by day, every single day led by the light. And who's the light? God is the light. Jew, Jewish famous expression is the Torah is light. May your face shine. With what? With knowing Torah. And why is that? That's number six. And that's what happened to Moses' face every time he talked to God. It got so bright he had to put a veil over his face. So Genesis 1-3, and God said, let light be. That's the literal Hebrew. And light was. Well, that's Genesis 1, 3, ending at 63 syllables. And Psalm 90, verse 3 is, come back, return, come to me, come home. Oh, and we're returning to the land of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers. You see? So what is Christ doing when he has 63 here? Believe it when I tell you. Now think about that. It might not be apparent real easily. But what was Genesis 1-3? God was talking. Light be. In that case, it was the Holy Spirit. Oh, he's equating himself with the Holy Spirit by using the same syllable count? It's Genesis 1-3, yeah. And just as the Holy Spirit was talking then, Christ is talking now. Believe it when I tell you believe what oh that he's the messiah oh that what he's telling you is is true oh that yes he's really god man just like the holy spirit in genesis 1 3 and what about psalm 90 verse 3 when it says god speaks return and the sons of adam return to god meaning they die you go home well, that's like going home to the land, too. You're dying to your old life and born to the new one. God speaks and it happens. And what did God do? God said, let my people go. And Pharaoh wouldn't let my people go. So God said, plague be. Just like he said, light be in Genesis 1-3. And this is the same God saying, believe it. When I tell you. 
see? I'm equal to the Holy Spirit in Genesis 1-3, and I'm equal to, and to, to the same God in Psalm 90, verse 3, saying, Shuvu. I'm God. I'm God-man. I'm really the third member of the Trinity. Yes, I am. That, and I'm going to use 63 in the other two verses where God speaks. Just to make sure you know. So now, ask yourself this question. Anybody who's a Jew who argues that God is just one person, does he know how to read his Hebrew very well? A whole bunch of Messianics who believe that the New Testament, although they try to argue that it was in Hebrew because they don't appreciate the beauty of the fact that Matthew is a Jew and he can write Greek too. It doesn't matter what language it is. It matters who wrote it. God. Oh, well, the Pharisees were, were Trinit Trinitarian. Yeah, they were. Even the Talmud is Trinitarian. And a lot of Jews know that, and they'll tell you that. Okay, so here we go. You want proof that Christ is saying right off the bat? That's pretty, po that's pretty pointed to use 63. And of course, 6 plus 3 is 9. That's 3 times 3. Ha, 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 ha. Get it? I'll let you mull that over because my throat is sore and I need to get a drink. Peace out.